September 7, 1979. And from my Howard Johnson's hotel window, I watched the impetuous Boston wind ruffle the linden trees in the parking lot. I am really worried about my hair. <laughs> Man from China, the first single from my techno pop band, Viva Beats, upcoming album was just released by Polygram Records. And my husband slash bandmate, Nick and I, are in the Northeast on a promotional visit to see a few journalists and DJs primping for a radio interview with Carter Allen at WVCN. I'm dressed head to toe in black. I line, kind of like what I'm wearing now. <laughs> I line my eyes with thick ebony, trying to slip into the persona of someone who does the interviews because they have an album coming out. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. I remind myself not to chatter or smile too much. Stay cool. Keep a lid on my inherent exuberance. Stepping with Nick into the hotel elevator, I spot a tiny yellow Holly and the Italians badge on the lapel of a sharply dressed young man. Holly and the Italians, I blurt, not so coolly. I, Oh, do you know them? He asks in a British accent. I'm intrigued. I do know them. Before Viva B, I was in an early LA punk band called Backstage Pass. <laughs> and Holly Vincent, she of Holly and the Italians played in it for a while. Holly, way fishly beautiful, a nonchalantly talented singer, songwriter, and guitar player that literally everyone had a crush on. She went on to form Holly and the Italians and have a hit with her punk classic, Tell That Girl to Shut Up. And FYI, Holly also did a super chill duet with I Got You Babe with Joey Ramon. How's that for crying, right? <laughs> so I say to the Englishman, yeah, Holly and I are friends. We were in a band together. His eyes widen, and I see his thoughts bounce all over the elevator. Hardly able to contain himself as the doors to the lobby open, he says, do you have a few minutes? You absolutely must meet Mark. Uh, exiting, Paul, as we learn his name as, tells us he's in Boston working as tour manager for Dire Straits. News traveled slowly in those days, no Instagram or Facebook, and I'm surprised to learn that Holly is dating Mark Knopfler, Dire Straits lead singer and brilliant guitar player. I'm still wrapping around that tidbit as he reiterates that we must just meet him. Introduced to Mark, I can feel a halo of the love he has for Holly radiate on me as her friend. Dating was clearly an understatement. Mark was hopelessly besotted with Holly. He has a hundred questions about us and our band, then enlists a hotel operator to call her at his home in England where she's staying. He wants to tell her we've met. He wants me to have a chance to say hi to her. Finally getting a call through, Holly comes to the phone. We haven't spoken in months, and I hear sheer delight and confidence in her voice, and maybe the tinge of an English accent. Things are working out for her, and I'm genuinely happy for both of them. Mark's kind and animated, maybe even exuberant. We're going to the Paradise Ballroom tonight to see a band that invited me down. They'll have to come along, he says. We explain that we only have our hotel room for one night and need to check out after the interview. He immediately insists we take his room and stay. He'll move in with John Elsley, bass player. Who, who does that? <laughs> We arrange to reconvene at seven, and Mick and I leave for the radio station. The interview is fun and not a bit embarrassing. Talking to Martin Offler and answering his questions was like a warm-up session. 
would banter with Carter about man from China and our upcoming animal, animal album, sorry. <laughs> he plays the track and a few listeners call in to talk to us. I relish slipping into that persona. Mark, John, the bass player, Paul, Nick, and I go to dinner at a North End Italian restaurant. Paul driving us around in a huge rented Buick. We get on like old friends. At the Paradise Ballroom, we watch a local band perform with all its heart for a half-empty room. But Mark is the star attraction. People gather around to meet him and get an autograph. One guy begs Mark to carve his initials into a gorgeous white Stratocaster. He refuses, unable to bring himself to desecrate the guitar. Dire Straits has a concert the next night at the Orpheum Theater, and Mark again invites us to stay and go to the show with them. We, of course, say yes. Then he asks us a favor, a favor only Mark Knopfler is likely to ask. Um, seems he sweats a lot, and uh, <laughs> sweat bands around his head, and his wrists are kind of his trademark look. I, he says he's running out of them and asks if we would find some for him. Sure we can. The next day it becomes Mick and mine's mission. And hitting several shops, we finally track down sweatbands at Filene's department store and proudly deliver them in time for the show. <laughs> at the concert, we're handed backstage passes. And from that opening string to down to the water line, through the last encore, twisting by the pool. I love every minute of the show. I can't resist picturing Mark and Holly performing together someday. Our trip to Boston has expanded far beyond my wildest imagination. Leaving the following day, we promised to stay in touch and I pledge to visit Mark and Holly in England soon. But that never happens. Before long, I hear that Holly broke up with Mark and shattered his heart. I am seriously sad that a rock and roll fairy tale romance fizzled. And looking back, I suppose the only upside was that Mark wrote, in my opinion, one of the most poetic and passionate songs of his career, and perhaps the 80s about her, Romeo and Juliet. Holly, Juliet, was this exceptional man's star-crossed lover. And although time has passed on through the decades, I still feel a pang of brokenness for them both whenever I hear the song, possibly more than they do. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you can fall for chains of silver, you can fall for chains of gold. You can fall for pretty strangers in the promises they hold. You promised me everything. You promised me thick and thin. And now you just say, oh, Romeo, yeah. You know, I used to have a scene with him. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.